everybody who wants to see me, see me. And everybody yeah. who's interested can hear me. Okay, if you're not, that's fine. Um, shall we start with a prayer? In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us all here. Um, please bless the SASH staff for making this summer so wonderful for the kids who are involved. I pray that you open our hearts and minds to your grace, especially any of us who might have a, a particular vocation in this room that's not to marriage. And thank you so much for blessing us with this time together. Um, we ask all of these graces through your son and through the intercession of our, mo our mother, Mary. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now that we are of our death. Okay. So, I was told to tell you about my vocation story and then what it's like, hashtag nunning. That would. So, so for uh, starters, for my vocation story, um, I grew up here. I was actually. Let's see. The, when I went here, this was not here. This whole side of the building is new. And um, my eighth grade class was actually in the basement of the church in Muldowney Hall. So that was really cool. Um, you know, you get to go up a floor and you're in the church with, you know, the Blessed Sacrament's right there. So whenever, you know, I was, having, I was really bored in class, I'd just be like, God, you got to get me out of this. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> you know, so, um, so there's that. And um, we used to have um, our principal, when I was in eighth grade, was a sister, actually. She was the only sister I had ever met in my whole entire life. And her name was Sister Bernadette. And um, so I credit my vocation, or the awareness of my vocation, with her. Um, so fast forward, um, after I got out of college, I got a degree that was not very useful and required that I go into grad school to get a more useful degree. So, so I went to Christendom Grad School. Does anyone have um, family in Christendom? Yes, yes, I knew, I knew. Yes, everybody's connected with Christendom somehow here. But uh, I, w I went for the grad school and I maybe really wish I could go for undergrad, but there you have it. And um, I was working full time, so actually during the school year I had to do my classes online, so it took me like four years to get through. But during the summer, there was this summer program where um, all of the students could come on campus and like stay in the dorms and go to classes. And it was really great. There was mass every day, um, adoration every night. So it was, for me, it was a vacation. And actually, I, I don't know if they do this on purpose, but like with vocations in mind, but the middle of the six weeks, so there's six weeks and then like the middle four weeks overlap with the consecrated life program. So a lot of times, um, the orders will send their people there to get for like um, further enrichment, you know, ongoing education, that kind of thing. And so my second week there, I was surrounded by all of these nuns or sisters. If it's a if she's a nun, you technically wouldn't be able to see her because she'd be cloistered. So she'd be out of the public eye. So if you see a sister, like you know, a woman with a veil, she's probably a sister because she's out and about. So I'm surrounded by all these sisters and all these brothers and all these priests from like all over the country and all these different orders. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's like going into like a Catholic shopping mall. It's like, <laughs> oh, wow, I like that sister's habit and that one was really nice and I really like the charism from that order and oh, I know some of these people. And, or, you know, it's, it was very exciting. Um, but uh, so I figured, well, the first year I was just trying to get through um, I was mostly focused on studying because I'd never been to grad school before and it was a lot of homework. So, you know, that, that kind of saved me the first year. I was just very, you know. And, you, you know, they came up and asked me, like, have you considered a religious vocation? Because they're, they're like God's salespeople, you know, as it were. So, you know, because you never know. Because that question might spark an, you know, an investigation and it might lead to the convent or the, the seminary. And that's great. So the first year was... Do you think you have a vocation? Have you asked God if you had a vocation? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, 
The second year, though, was, um, was difficult because I had gotten the schoolwork under my belt, so I had all like this free time, and so I still have sisters coming up. Do you think you have a vocation? You know, um, have you considered a religious vocation? I'm like, I have three more years here. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe. But then, like, I have all this stuff, and you know, it's not a good time, and it, you know, it's. And I even, I think I even went through the whole. Oh wow! Thanks for asking. That's that's really sweet of you. I'm I'm really flattered. Thank you for asking. But no, I'm not interested. I don't know if any of you have had that kind of conversation before with, in another context. You know, someone asks you out and you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little like that. But then and but but then uh, God had a few surprises for me, and so um, it was really shit. So the first way you you can be. 50% sure, maybe 70% sure you might possibly have a vocation of religious life is if you have the desire for it. Because if you don't have the desire, then there's kind of no point in, like God's not gonna make you do something you don't wanna do. You know, if it's like, I think you should be a doctor and you're interested in mechanics, then you know, absolutely no way, don't. Because you know, being a doctor requires a lot of years of study and it's, you know, long hours and, you know, it's a whole different profession. If you have no interest in it whatsoever, then you shouldn't. Do it, especially if your passion is elsewhere in mechanics or you know whatever. So if you have a desire for religious vocation, then that's a good indication that you might want to investigate it. It might not end your journey might not end in a religious order, but at least you looked at it. So, but um, mine was kind of more of a passing desire. You know, of course, I'm surrounded by all these beautiful sisters. I'm like, wow, they're so happy and their habits are so pretty. And, you know, they get to spend their life, you know, talking to God and serving Him and serving the church. That must be really nice. It's actually kind of like what I do now because um, um, I was, my mother is very involved in the church. And when I was little, if I wanted to be with my mom, I'd go with her on all her church things. So I practically grew up here. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't have a lot of, I didn't spend a whole lot of time outside just because, you know, there's always something to help out with here. So. It's like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing anyone, and I'm taking all these theology classes, and I don't really want to study anything else. And they spend kind of a lot of time in the chapel, and I mean, and the nuns look really happy, and okay, okay. And then, um, but I, I would think, you know, oh no, 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 I have responsibilities at home. You know, I have, I have my job to think of. I have this, I have that, and I was like, and finally I sat down. I was like, Lord, I don't know what you want of me. I really want to do this, but I can't. So I'm sorry. So no. Goodbye. <laughs> so, but of course, you know, when, when you do that, you can't. It, it, it's Jesus. You can't. It's not like you can just part ways and then never see him again. Because I still had to go to mass. I still had to pray. I still had to do all of the. So you know, it, it was very awkward. You know, the next couple weeks, going you know, going to mass and just be like. Hi, sit in the back pew. Hi, okay, bye. <laughs> um, and actually, I got so desperate because it was starting to interfere. Because you know, I'm sorry, but you know, when you when you really like someone and all you can do is think about them, even if you don't want to do that, it just it keeps coming back. And so finally, I think I said something like, um, "Oh, okay." So I took this to confession because I figured where else am I gonna get good spiritual advice, right? And so the priest said, ask God to increase the desire for the vocation that you're called to. Because I was just, you know, I was like, it could be either one, you know. I could go this way or that way, and I don't know which way to go. And um, so I did that. I said, all right, Lord, I'm at a loss here. I'm at the end of my rope. This is driving me crazy, and I'd like to, you know, close it up and move on with my life. Because I have plans. I have big plans. You know, I want to travel. I want to teach, I want to do all sorts of stuff. And so I said, fine, all right, Lord, please increase the desire for the vocation you want me to have. And I thought, okay, after two weeks, I'm going to go home. I won't see any more of these sisters. And, you know, maybe I'll, you know, I'll go travel and do my work, and maybe I'll meet some guy, and we'll settle down, and it'll be great. And my mom will be so happy, because then she'll have grandchildren. Do you, do you get that from my new parents? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm at the age where, before I discerned, my mom was always like, I would like grandchildren. I'm like, okay, mom. I'm working on it. First, I gotta find the guy. <laughs> so I was like, "There's a lot of things that happen to have have to happen before I get them off." 
But uh, so, so I, I thought that was what was going to happen, and it, evidently that's not what happened. So <laughs> I was really mad. I was like, Lord, that's not what I wanted you to do. That, that I had an idea and you didn't follow it, and now I'm really annoyed with you. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I thought it, but I didn't say that. But um, so that's the first indication I had. And so when I went home, I told my mom, actually, um, what would you say if I joined a comment or you know just started looking at comment comments? And I made the mistake of telling my mom this in the car. So if you ever have this conversation, don't tell her in the car. Because <laughs> it suddenly got very quiet and she looked at me and she's like, Do you are you serious? You wanna do this again? You know, we're turning and the car's starting to do one of these things, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely dead. Because I still lived at home at that point. I thought, if this goes down badly, I'm just there's no escape. <laughs> and so and so we talked about it, and we talked about it, and then we talked about it some more, and she's like, oh no, Kara, I, I, you know, because we've had this conversation before, and she said, you know, every time you come home from one of these things, you want to be a nun, and then, you know, we talk you out of it, and then you're, you don't want to be a nun, and so I, I don't know what you're doing here. I'm like, okay, you're right, I'm not, I'm not going to be a nun. And so I went back to Jesus, and I said, Lord, I'm really sorry, but my mom sent it home. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I don't have my mom's permission. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, I mean, if you really want me to do this, you know, like, I mean, if you really want me to do this, and this isn't just me, and you have to work some kind of miracle, because otherwise I'm not getting out of here. <laughs> so actually, actually he did. Um, my mom gave me her blessing, and um, you know, a lot of the things I was worried about, a lot of the things I was worried about um, actually worked themselves out. So, you know, when you, um, when you offer yourself to doing God's will, which always um, finds some continuity with the desires in your heart. He's, again, he's not going to make you do something that you have absolutely no desire to do. You'll know, you know, at some point you'll know. And when you trust yourself to him, then things do work themselves out. So that's what happened. And then, um, so I started contacting all these orders. And wouldn't you know, like, I contacted like four or five of them. And the four out of the five were like, no. I was like, really? They're like, no. I was like, okay. Like some of them, the charism didn't match up. You know, the, the mission of the order wasn't really what I was interested in. I, there was one I literally just called them because I like the habits. No lot. Like, you know, the Sisters of Life, you know, they have the, the blue and the white. And I thought that looked so pretty. I was like, sure, I'll do whatever they tell me. I want to wear that for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> and at one point, they're like, well, you know, you have this issue, you know, you have an issue with this part of our, our um, mission, and I think you should look at that with the Lord, and I looked at it with the Lord, and I was like, nah, you're right, I'm not that interested. And this other order was like, well, you have this condition about you, and I, I don't think it's going to work out. I was like, okay. And then the other order, I actually, I, um, I actually went to come and see for uh, the Dominican National Nashville, because I knew, like, in my heart of hearts, I always wanted to be Dominican. Anyone know Thomas Aquinas in here? I know you've been studying him a little bit. Okay, I know his stuff is a little wordy, but he was brilliant, and he had this gift of, like, simplifying really complicated ideas in simple, like, simple language in his day, I guess. Uh, we don't use the these and the thous and the to wits and the, you know, all that, but for, for his day, it was simple. So, and then he had this, this flaming passion for the Blessed Sacrament. You know, a lot of our um, our hymns for adoration, he wrote. So, you know, he's, he's one of my heroes. So I always wanted to be Dominican because I wanted to be, you know, his little sister in religion. So um, I visited the Nashville Dominicans, but we didn't, there wasn't really a connection there. So finally I called up my friends in Texas because I knew them from school. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, come on down. Well, you know, we'll, you know, we'll introduce you to everybody. We, you'll get to try the food and all that. And there was only one problem was that they all spoke Vietnamese and I only spoke English. So I was like, yes. <laughs> and I said, are you sure that, are you sure the Vietnamese isn't giving me a problem? They're like, no, 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 everybody here speaks English and Vietnamese. I was like, okay, are you sure? Because this is really crazy. And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. Just come on down and we'll see what the Lord has in store for you. I was like, okay. I get to see my friends. I get to go good food. I get 
daily mass and adoration and others. I don't see anything wrong with this, so that's what I did. And um, I went to the come and see. And then here's the second like big indicator if you know if you're following the path God's wants you to feel, uh, follow is um, immediately I felt I was like I was right at home. I felt like you know for the first time in my life I felt like I was really fully myself. You know, I felt comfortable in my own skin. I hadn't felt that since I was in like third grade, <laughs> you know. Well, because, you know, there's the awkward middle school years and no one's comfortable in their own skin, I'm sorry to say. And then there's the high school years and then there's the college years. I went to public college, so it wasn't, I didn't really have a lot in common. So, you know, there was just a long period of just feeling like I'm here, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or who I'm supposed to be. But when I met those sisters, I was like, that's it. I want to be just like them. You know, they were joyful, they were, they could get really silly, I mean, they were, you know, but they were, you know, deeply in love with the Lord, they're passionate about the mission, and they were really smart, and they, they're all about my height, actually, they're, you know, they're, 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 I'm serious, I mean, the, the short thing is, if I, I was, I was joking with someone earlier, like, it's really bad when you're about a foot tall in the vacuum, <laughs> but, but the upside is you can ask all the nice, tall, for you ladies, you can ask all the nice, tall men, can you please get me that thing up there? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, sure. What else do you need? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but the other downside is sometimes if taller people want to torture you, they'll just go over to you like this. And they'll be like, how are you? <laughs> so I mean, it's upside and downside. But the, the, the moral of the story is if you feel joyful, if you feel like you can be yourself, if you feel at peace, that's the big one too. Um, Sorry. Um, one of my our uh, passion directors actually said, you know, every vocation has challenges. Like sometimes they can be really big challenges. Like for me, um, the order I'm in is very Vietnamese, very ethnic, and I'm I'm culturally American. So there's, you know, sometimes we rub up against each other the wrong way. There's a lot of us packed into a very small house. So you, know, you can imagine, it would be like having like. 11 other, like 10 other sisters and then 11 aunts and then you're the only one that speaks English most of the time. So it's, it can be very crazy. But at the end of the day, if you're at peace, you know, if you feel like, yeah, it's challenging, but I want to do this. You know, a lot of the challenges take care of themselves. And when all that's said and done, if you're still, if you can see yourself still being happy there, that's a surefire sign that that's where you're meant to be. Because again, God wants your happiness. I mean, that's how we're going to glorify Him is when we're authentically ourselves, when we're authentically human, when we're deeply joyful. I mean, He doesn't want, what did Pope Francis say? He doesn't want a lot of sourpuss saints. I was impressed. The Pope used the word sourpuss. I was like, I like him. <laughs> that's the first Pope I've heard, you know, it's really like high liturgical language, sourpuss. <laughs> so, you know, He's not going to, you know, God's not going to attract other souls to Him with a bunch of saints that. Okay, now I'm gonna go wear a hair shirt and I'm gonna be grumpy all day. And then I'm gonna go do my postulate. I look like this all day. No. No one's gonna wanna join the Catholic faith if we all look like this. You know, that's not very attractive. But you know, if we're truly happy, it'll show through. So, um, let's see. Just making sure I got everything. Okay, so those are really the big things. Oh, okay, well, I do have to share this one little story. So, so everybody knows St. Therese, right? The little flower, you know, she said she'd let fall a shower of roses and all that. So, I, you know, I've been having trouble discerning my vocation, and I mean, I had trouble, I was trying to decide between marriage and religious life. I didn't think they were gonna happen right away, but I thought at least God, you know, could point me in the right direction. If I had a fork in the road and I don't know where to turn, so I thought, you know, every Catholic girl in the history of the Catholic Church, since St. Therese, has done the rose thing. So if it worked for them, I'm going to try it too. <laughs> I thought, okay. Um, okay, Lord. Um, so, I need you to give me a sign. I know, I know, I hope this doesn't annoy you, but I need you to give me a sign because it's me and I need things to be very, like, obvious because it's me, right? I was like, okay, I need you to give me a sign. I know. Um, and I look around the room and I see the statue of St. Therese with, you know, the roses and the cross and all that. And they're like yellow roses and pink roses. I thought, okay, that's it. 
I would like a yellow rose. Because I thought, how common are yellow roses, right? Like, everyone always gives white roses or pink roses or red roses. And I'm like, you never hear about yellow roses, so I'm going to get a yellow rose. So I'm like, okay, Jesus, I would like a yellow rose. And that'll be my sign. And I thought, like, as I go on in my life, maybe I'll meet some guy. And then, like, he'll take me on a date, and he'll bring me a yellow rose. I thought, okay, that's great. That couldn't be more obvious. It's like, like highlighter yellow, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's like God's like, this one, this one. See the bright yellow, this one. I'm like, okay, I got it, all right. And if not, well, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so so we, went to, um, we went to Canada for two weeks for um, our vacation. And on the last day, we go to visit the Cathedral of St. Anne to pray or whatever. We walk out, you know, we walk in, it's a beautiful cathedral, and you know, they have adoration in the back, and we walk out, and I pass by this bush all by itself, and you know, the little, like they have the dirt, and then they have the rocks, and then they have, the, and there's this little yellow rose, I was like, what is that? What is that? <laughs> so, I was like, that's really confusing. So we go home, and then after that, and the months after that, I started noticing all these little yellow roses popping up. But there was no guy. I'm like, come on, Lord, you gotta, what is that supposed to mean? You know, I'd see them on the altar, I'd see them in the church gardens, I saw one in my backyard, and I'm like, this isn't finding Jesus, what are these all for? <laughs> like, come on, you gotta be more clear. So, um, February, oh, okay, so after, if you zoom forward to after I started talking to the sisters of the order I'm currently in, um, we, We've been having conversations over the course of the year, just to keep in touch. And then finally, like in February, they, the lady I was talking to said, you know, um, I can sense you do have a, I think you have a vocation. Why don't you come down for, no, no, no. She said, I can imagine you entering next fall, you know, after you finish your master's and all that. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. I have a date. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what it is. It's like, oh, great. Okay, so we have a step forward. One of the five doors in front of me opened, and the others are still closed. So that's great. Now I can move forward with my life. You know, I get to move on. Um, and then I remember it's February 15th, 2019. I, the day after Valentine's Day. I walk into the chapel because, you know, I volunteer at the school and then I have some time to sit around so I go visit the chapel. And I, sw I mean, oh, I have my phone, but it's too small. I took a picture of it. And so I walked in and there was the monstrance and then by the statue with Our Lady of Lourdes, if anyone's been in there, there's two, the, well, no, it's now two statues of Our Lady, but there's one of Our Lady of Lourdes on a pedestal and below her, there's this vase of yellow roses. There's a dozen of them. <laughs> there was a dozen of them. And they had like, you know, ferns and like baby's breath. It was, and it was a really fancy boss. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's it. Those are my roses. Oh my gosh. And you know, I'm sitting there in the chapel and you're supposed to be really quiet. So I'm like, and he's probably like, <laughs> so I was like, okay, 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 okay. I got it. But you know what, you know, it's, uh, even, you know, when you're, dating or even once you're engaged there's still always the fact you know there's still always the test of time right and so I mean even right up until like the e the middle of the year uh, end of the year this last year I was still thinking like you know there's a lot of challenges I'm still not sure like I'm certain I have a vocation but I don't know if it's with this community or with another community I mean Lord you got to give me something because I'm I'm struggling and so we were cleaning out the um so they move the sisters around a lot in the Dominican order because they have to go out and preach, and so they, they move around. And so the sisters who were leaving gave us all of their stuff to go through, and what they didn't want, we put in the Goodwill bin, and what we did want, we keep, you know, just spring cleaning. And lo and behold, in one of the, the containers, I found this. And you guys might not be able to see, but it's yellow roses. <laughs> so I got into yellow roses and God was probably kind of like, you know what, I'm going to give you a sign and it's going to be so permanent and you cannot possibly lose it or doubt me or anything. Look, they're plastic, they can't even die. It was like, so here, here you go. This is for me, for you. Please stay. <laughs> so so that, that's where he wants me for now. So I'm, a, I'm still at the start of my vocation uh, journey. I could still really use all of your prayers. But if you want to know how to discern a vocation, you can call up St. Therese, you can call up St. John Paul II, you know, um, always, you know, definitely keep an eye on how 
you know, um, explore, you know. For those who are called to marriage, that means dating. For those who think they're called elsewhere, don't be afraid to call, you know, pick up the phone and ask, hey, um, I saw your website, I met one of your sisters, I'm interested, can we talk some more? That's all you have to do. That's literally all you have to do. And, you know, in the course of talking, you might say, hey, I think you're ready, you want to come on a come and see? Or they might say, I think you should wait a couple of years, but I'd like to keep talking with you. You know, it's, it's, very, it's very low key, very low stress. I was very stressed, but I, I get stressed easily. <laughs> so don't take me as an example. You know, I, it'd be a while, I'd be like, oh, maybe they forgot me. And then they call me, like, oh. <laughs> so, um, so, and definitely keep an eye out for joy. But even if you don't always feel, you know, joyful and happy, definitely peace. My, um, my vocation director said, peace is the one thing that the devil can't imitate. Like he, you know, because you have this, Unaccount often unaccountable for third party trying to run interference between you and God, right? Because, you know, because he does not want us to be happy. He does not want us to be with God. And he absolutely does not want you finding out your vocations. Because as St. Catherine of Siena said, if you are who you were meant to be, you will set the world on fire. And that is the last thing the devil wants. So he might sow seeds of doubt and anxiety, but he cannot take away your peace. So if you're truly following God's will, you'll know in your heart, you'll feel that peace that the world can't take away, you know, that you can't explain. And you'll find the grace to keep moving forward. And, you know, so the joy, the peace, don't be afraid to call. Do you have any questions? I know that was a lot. Okay, yes. What's your daily, day-to-day uh, -day schedule like? Okay, so our Life in the, so people think life in the comet might be, you know, very serene, and very quiet. And my mom was teasing me, like, we've, you know, the nuns especially, we glide everywhere. You know, if you watch them in the chapel, they like, I'm serious, they glide. And like, you know, their skirts are like, you know, they, <laughs> I, I don't know how they do it. I think it's the habit because it's so flowy. So it's easy to, yeah. But actually, in fact, um, my com it might just be my community because we're, um, we're just very, enthusiastic and joyful but there is literally never a dull moment so like one time I went down to take a nap because it was free time and it was just like a regular Monday or something and then all of a sudden people were yelling in the hallway I'm like what happened and the roof had leaked it was like oh never mind so much for my nap <laughs> or you know I'll just be walking on the on our trail praying rosary and somebody will come up and say hey sister just got this new like cache of fish and we have to go clean it right now come on like Okay, so you know, there's that. It's kind of like living for those of you with, especially those of you with big families, there's, you know, there's always something going on, right? And then, you know, things are falling apart over here or we're putting things up over here or someone's birthday's coming up or someone's feast is coming up or, you know, maybe someone's sick with COVID and then you all of a sudden have to make up 50 goodie bags to send them, you know, cheer them up. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of activity in the comment. It's actually, it's far from boring, it's, sometimes it's a little hard to keep up with. I was uh, joking, like, you know, maybe when I get the habit, when I'm a novice, I'll get the gliding thing down, but we're postulants. We have chores, we have classes, we have prayer times, we have um, exercise time, and we're literally running everywhere. So, um, you would think uh, the chapel is in walking distance of my dormitory, and I'm literally almost always running to get to the chapel on time. It's, it's bad, maybe I shouldn't have told you that. So if you ever want to enter religious life, try to be on time for things. Not like me. <laughs> um, let's see, so we wake up at, I'm very sorry, we wake up at 5 in the morning every day, except on weekends when we wake up at 6.30. It, it feels very luxurious. It really does. When I came home on vacation, I slept until 9, and I woke up at 6.30 anyway. I was just like, ah, this isn't so bad. <laughs> When I lived at home, nine was early for me. I'm just saying. So grace of the vocation, right? You know, God gives you the grace when you need it. And, um, and when I first came, I made this promise to myself. I was like, I'm as soon as the bell rings, I'm gonna get out of bed because I mean, it's just like college. Because if I sleep through the bell, by the end of the year, I'm never even gonna hear it, and I'm gonna show up like after morning prayers are over. You know, I did that in college. I thought if I skip a class freshman year, by the senior year, I'm gonna not even be there. Probably just gonna go home. So, so um, 
You wake up at five, you know, you get dressed, you do your thing. You have to be in the chapel at 5.30 for meditation, which personally I think is really risky because we just got up like 30 minutes ago. So if you're, if it's cold, especially when it's cold, sometimes it gets cold and you're sitting there and it's dead silent, like drop, like sometimes a sister will sneeze, but you know, it's like pin drop silent. So you're just sitting there like, And I see it, it's not just me. I looked over across the way once and I saw the postulant um, like in the row across of this. You can't really see their faces because their hair's in the way, but you can tell that they have the head bob. <laughs> and then sometimes I see the sisters too. They're like, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what age and religious life you are, that silent time is risky. Mrs. Micus, your appointment is here at the front office. Mrs. Micus, sorry sash guys. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then we have the all call too, so you know you gotta listen to that. Um, we have all call in the comic because we're in different buildings and it's all in like one area. But you know, if you need Sister So and So and she's like all the way across campus, you gotta do the all call. I still have to learn to do that. So let's see. There's prayers, and then there's mass. At the end of the year, I started falling asleep during communion, which was really bad. I'm so sorry, Jesus. I don't think you minded though. And then we have breakfast. And then we have classes during the school year. Um, we had like seven classes, but it was all once a week. So, and then the homework is really light because we're just newbies, so they're being nice to us. <laughs> and then there's always chores. There's always chores. And it depends on like where you're stationed. And it depends on the weather too, because a lot of times it'll be outside. But if it's really cold or really miserable, they'll keep us inside. So, and it's always like stuff around the house. Like I had to clean out the oven once. And then there was one time I had to clean out fish. There's always cleaning. So it's, you learn a lot of interesting skills. Um, I've never cleaned up a fish. Like, like caught two hours ago and like just recently died. And so they bring it in. That's your dinner, you have to clean it. So you know, I'll spare you the details. But I learned all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> I learned how to clean a squid. Because they had, they had squid as part of the dish. So I learned how to do that. Ink got everywhere. It did not get on my sleeves, thank God. But, um, and then we have a um, chapel visit at noonish, because we're home. Um, a lot of the sisters will go out to teach because we're a teaching order, but the ones that stay home make a chapel visit. Then we have lunch. And then technically it's free time, but actually there's talent time and then exercise time, and then what is actually study and nap time, and then we have uh, evening prayers. So it's, it's a full day. We don't go to bed until like 10.30. But we have nap time, so it's okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I have to go out and teach and I don't get nap time. <laughs> maybe maybe the end of the year I'll just put a movie on and they can just, I don't, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but um, that's, that's my average day. We all have a turn in the kitchen cooking. So I've burned so many things. Um, I haven't, no. Oh, okay, so um, the joke in the comment is that if you break something, it means you have a vocation there. And I swear, the first month, I broke like four things. I wasn't even trying. Like, there was one where a lid wouldn't close, but you know, it's like one of those odd Tupperwares where you have a lid that kind of fits, but like secretly you think this lid went with something else. And I was trying to get it <laughs> to stick, and then like the corner fell off, and I was like, oh no. Because if something goes wrong, you have to go apologize to the sister in charge, because you broke something of theirs. There was one time, so we, we um, one of our chores is to take out the trash at night. This is hilarious. So a, a fellow Pasha and I were trying to take out the trash and then it was too heavy and we couldn't get it in. And then I think we ended up like shoving it into the, the, the dumpster, but then the lid wouldn't shut. And so we were trying, no, the lid, we, we couldn't get the lid open. That's what it was. We're trying to get into the top and the lid wouldn't open. And so we got one of the sisters like gardening tools, like a broom or something. And we're trying to prop the, the lid open and it's so heavy and we missed, it slipped and the thing slammed down on top of it and broke the, the thing in half. <laughs> we're like, we looked at each other like, chit roy, which is Vietnamese for, we're so dead. <laughs> chit roy. <laughs> so we had to go and apologize to sister. But the problem was that the, the lid, we actually got it open, but we couldn't close it. So I had, they, I don't think they knew I did this. And I'm, I'm not supposed to have done this because we can't go out by ourselves at night. But I went after night prayer 
I went to the shed, got the ladder, and you know, I, I had to climb up the ladder, and then I had to you know, do one of these things all by myself in the dark. It was fun, <laughs> stinky, but um, they, I don't think they know I did that. Don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't leave it open, but so there's there's all sorts of fun things in the comment. You, you know, you come home with stories that would, you would never have otherwise. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so postulancy is one to three years. Our order is, I think it's the only one that does this, but it depends on the individual. So I know Nashville, the Nashville Dominicans have a one-year postulancy, and then you're automatically sent up to novitiate. I mean, if you don't know, turn out. But for us, um, it depends. So we had two postulants in our class who were ready to go into novitiate right away. They were older. They had a lot of experience. Um, they were. They felt a deep connection with the charism of the community, you know, the mission of the community. So they, they were like a shoe in. They got it right away. Most of us are going to go out back for a second year. That's average time. Um, and then one of us is staying back for a third year, but she has like a special situation. So average is two years. So you get the first year to kind of figure out things, and then the second year to get under your belt and then prepare for novitiate. And then after that, you're in the spiritual desert for two years. But you get you get the pretty habits, so it's okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. You know, like the movie the Sound of Music. Yes. So when you said there was a floating like that, mm -hmm. you said like in the fountain that they were floating. So yeah. Like Some, yeah. Well, oh, that's exactly what I thought. And they they do that too. And they have the long scapulars, so you know it looks really pretty. But you know it's really scary at night when I go walking because they all look like ghosts. So I'll see them in the corner of my eye, and they'll, you know, they're doing their evening exercise or whatever, and you know, it's getting dark, and I see this white sheet out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh my gosh! There was one time there was a sister who was tending her flowers or something, and so she was just standing there like this with her back to me, and I saw her. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she turned around. I was like, oh, never mind. It was scary though. And of course, the the for the Dominicans, the habit ends right above the ankle, and then they have. I guess, I don't know, but you can't, you can't see, you know, in the dark, you only see the habits, so it looks like they're floating above the ground. <laughs> it's, it's a little scary. Um, any other questions? No? We have two minutes to three minutes to spare. Yes? What is your, like, exercise? Um, it depends on the postulant. I personally absolutely hate running, so I walk. Around, you know, we have a we have a like a trail around our complex, our property. Some of the some of the postulants jog, and I, I admire them a lot. So I wave as they jog past me. Um, <laughs> we we got we found we discovered a couple of bikes in our garage, so they were doing that. And then um, that we just got a junior sister who likes basketball, so they're starting a basketball club, I guess. <laughs> so there you go. I walk, and if it's I don't know what I do when it's rainy. I guess. Oh wait, we have we have a covered walkway, so I just walk in there. So that's when I get my rosary because we're supposed to say a community rosary, and then we're supposed to say one on our own. And I, I'm very sorry, but if I don't, if I miss my slot, then I forget to do it. So, but we already say one every day, so you know, I try my best. Any other questions? Well, mine was unusual because I met the sisters through my grad school program, but the diocesan website should have a page um, where it lists all the comments in the diocese. And then actually, you know that poster we have with all the, the people on it? So you can look up them, you know, where they're from. Um, I started mine, I just started literally typing things into the search bar. So it's like, you know, um, sisters and habits with the devotion to blah blah blah, or I type, you know, you can type in teaching orders, or you know, um, they recommend. There's a whole list of things you want to look for, like if they're orthodox, you know, if what they teach is in line with the church. It, um, I recommend the ones that are fully habited, but you know, every individual is different. Um, if they're, you know, obedient to Rome. Hey, Kara. Yes. There is a brochure um, that the office of vocations offers. It's not complete, but there's a great deal of information about the orders for women and the orders for men. So if you just write to the vocations director, so the 
diocese, they'll give you a ton of information and then they'll never leave you alone. So I get emails <laughs> still. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? We're exactly the time. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for everything.